Hello, everyone. Um, I can't get my camera to work, but I just wanted to post some tips for uh, module five. I saw some people with questions. I had a couple emails. Um, and I know that this is a big jump from previous modules, the requirements that uh, are listed and, and what you need to do. So I just wanted to take a minute and go over the um, module directions for the course. So let me just share my screen here. And so what we're looking at is this is the rubric. If you go through the module, you have the module five analysis for written work for first audience guidelines, and you have the directions which uh, say that you are explaining your writer's choices in relation to genre, audience, purpose, and subject. So essentially what we're doing is we're doing a rhetorical analysis for this project. Uh, so we're analyzing the decisions that the author made when creating the work, and then you're talking about this to a specific audience of your own. And so you have some uh, specific rubric criteria that the um, that the college is asking you to make sure that you adhere to. But I want to make sure that when we go down here, what you're submitting an APA or MLA one to two page Microsoft Word document. So we really should be looking at a document that's around you know 400, uh, 500 words uh, or so. So it's, it's a significant, it's a much more significant document. The other thing I wanna make sure that I point out is that you can use writing that you've done up to this point in other assignments in the course to motivate your writing in this uh, prompt. All right, so this doesn't have to be something that is um, you know, totally new and, and original because we've been working on these concepts throughout the course. And then the other thing I wanted to point out, and I don't wanna make this terribly long, um, but if we take a look at the exemplars, I'm gonna look at APA because I think almost everybody is using APA. If we take a look at the APA exemplar. I'm gonna stop sharing this tab. And I'm going to share. My screen. And so let me bring up this module five exemplar. So one of the things that you'll notice as you're taking, as you're looking at this, is this bracketed text is giving you um, what criteria that aspect of the uh, sample writing is covering, right? So this bracketed text isn't something that you need to do. And I know in the past, some people have uh, thought that they needed to do this analysis of their own writing, um, but that's not the case. This is just giving you some context. And so, you know, you can see that this author is, um, is giving some historical and cultural context, right? So by 2030 is, is signaling that. We are talking about the um, working conditions, right? AI workers. We're talking about um, replacing people who worked on data and data analysis and, and people in other industries. So we see all of these different ideas that are meeting the criteria that I pointed out a little while ago, right? So the historical and cultural context, the topic, the purpose, the audience, the cultural context, right? So all of these things are being addressed. The other thing that you'll notice if you go through here this is written in, in a fairly long paragraph, but what you will probably see is you'll see that th we have our um, hook, right? So we're connecting our audience to our purpose. And then we, as we move down here, Right, we see that uh, we have a more traditional paragraph. Now there's a lot of writing in between that's explaining decisions that are being made uh, throughout this writing. But what you notice about these paragraphs is that you have a topic, right? So we have this uh, counterpoint, right? Even though the author argues for a balance between these two, uh, these two ideas, right? She emphasizes the productivity and ways to be a productive worker. So the productivity and ways to be a productive worker, this is a transition statement. This is a topic sentence. 
And now we go into contextualizing the topic sentence, quoting to support that, explaining what, what that means in terms of our overarching thesis, right? And connecting it back to um, our purpose. We do the same thing in this next paragraph. The importance of work-life balance is another item. And so it's always these five things. It's always a topic sentence. It's always explaining why that topic is important to your thesis. It's supporting it with an item from the text. It's uh, explaining what that support does in terms of your purpose and then linking it back to the overarching thesis. So those five parts of every paragraph are what you're emphasizing. So hopefully this helps you and hopefully it gives you some context in terms of how much you should be writing. Now, the other nice part about once you create this version of the text, once you create this document, is that for uh, your final week, for week seven, right? So, so we do some revision next week. And in week seven, we go back and we revisit this, but you're really completing a good chunk of the work for your final project in this week. And so the more you get done now, the less you do uh, later on in the course. So again, as I've said throughout this class, it all builds upon uh, itself. So hopefully this answers some questions that you might have. And if you have additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.